Okay, I think we have everyone logged in now, so we will just get started. So firstly, good morning, everyone. You are very welcome to this webinar that will give you an insight into a student's journey to attaining the Financial Planning Risk Advisor designation with LIA. To attain the Financial Risk Advisor designation, you must complete one module called Risk Management and Insurance Planning. This, one, this is one of the modules on the postgraduate diploma in financial planning. So this can be completed as part of the program or on a standalone basis as well. My name is Grania Lee, a member of the education team in LIA and coordinator for the postgraduate diploma in financial planning. I am delighted to be joined today by Brian Grimes, Head of Finance, Actuarial and Investment with Intesa San Paolo Life and lecturer for this module. We are also joined by Brian Ford, Senior Financial Advisor with Rockwell Financial Management, and who is a very recent graduate of this module and has attained the Financial Planning Risk Advisor designation and is about to undertake his final module within the Postgraduate Diploma in Financial Planning, which is the gateway to CFP designation. So thank you both for joining us today and participating in this webinar. And just before we get started, um, I just want to encourage our audience to ask questions. You will see a Q&A box uh, at the bottom of your screen. We have set aside um, time at the end to answer these questions and any questions we don't get to, we will follow up with those individuals afterwards. So this is the second of a series of webinars where we are joined by past students and lecturers for of the modules within the postgraduate diploma in financial planning. The first of these webinars can be found on LIA website, www.lia.ie. And in that webinar, Emer Kirk, CEO of the Financial Planning Standards Board Ireland, gave us a really clear picture of what the future of financial planning in Ireland looks like. And taking into consideration the first generation of wealth transfer that is about to happen and the significant gains in mortality and longevity in the past few years. With this in mind, it is fantastic that we get the opportunity today to hear how the knowledge and skills of a student would gain from the risk management and insurance planning module that will assist financial advisors when building their customer's financial plan. So to start off, we have two Brian's here today, as mentioned, so we'll have to use full names to avoid any confusion. And with that, Brian Grimes, can I ask you to give us an insight as to what students might expect from this course over the 12 weeks and what the overall learning outcome you hope students will achieve? Sure. Thanks, Kanye. Um, the, the, there's two aspects to, to the course. Um, one aspect, a small aspect of it is business accounts. So let me, let me come back to that later. But the, the, the bulk of, of the course re relates to the, how, how we help people manage the, the key risks that they face through their financial life. Um, and the risks we're talking about are clearly mortality risk. If I have someone who depends on my, my income, um, morbidity risk, illness, uh, accident, you know, that can, that can interrupt my ability to, to, to look after my, my own needs. Yeah. Um, we then look at in investment risk. Now, now there's a whole module in, in the grad dip um, run by Bernard Walsh on, on investments, which focuses more so on the, the assets. But what we look at is how people think about investment risk themselves and how we can understand that because, you know, there's a huge responsibility on the advisor to, to acknowledge the, the, the nature of the person. We cover that. Um, and another major risk, that probably the biggest risk that people take on is the choice they make at retirement on, on how they choose their money, whether they yeah. choose uh, an annuity or an ARF, or, or if they choose an ARF, the, 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 the pace at which they decide to, to spend that, that money. Um, and, and all these are, are topics that I presume a lot of the audience here have done the QFA. So, so all, all these are topics that people will have uh, covered uh, yeah. in, in some level before. But, but, but our, our aim here is to perhaps bring it to the next level. Uh, mm -hmm. to, to bring it to the next level that, that if you are already a, you know, a, a, a broker or an independent broker, or, or if you're, you're part of a tight agency or so on, that if you're thinking, okay, let's say, I was responsible for designing the advice proposition. Okay, how, how, what, what is my proposition? How, yeah. how do I go about it? Um, and, and therefore, we're, we're trying to bring some extra tools 
to do that on, on, on how to do, do that. So, so first off, let's really mm -hmm. understand the, the need. Um, yeah. And and to do that, we we bring some extra skills in in the course. Some some deeper uh, understanding of financial mathematics, uh, that's also covered in other aspects of, of of the graduate. But but given this is this is this can be a standalone class. You know, we will introduce yeah. those topics, and and I'll get you through a, a comfort with with those pieces. We'll also be introducing elements of mortality, understanding uh, the the. You know the the available tables that tell us how how long somebody's like to, likely to live because actually isn't it's not a a major part of understanding how I advise someone on either protection or or on using my my pension benefits, um and some some sense of, of probability so so there there are some definitely some extra skills coming in there that that um you know that that I get you to, yeah definitely to understand yeah. so, so there's the understanding of the actual you know, mathematics or numbers of it, but then clearly there's also an understanding of how people think about it. If we're advising customers, they think about things in a strange, you know, in, in sometimes in strange ways and behavioral economics is the whole science of that and, and we bring that in. So so we pull those two together uh, and, and then we'll come to to um, to to think about, okay, how are the products that are available to me? You know, how, how can I match those? So with those three elements together, you know, the the understanding of the need, the understanding of how people think about it, and the, the possible solutions, it, 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 we pull them together to try and maybe, I guess you asked me, what's my main learning outcome? I, I, I just want people confident in that they could re-engineer the proposition, yeah. maybe think about it from scratch. Yeah, which is really um, important as well, yeah. Yeah, and 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 then the, and the nature of the, of the class. Then you know, I'm conscious. I I don't advise people. I, I'm I'm an actuary. We're generally not allowed to talk to people. You know, so 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 the, so the class is a, a combination of of I, I'm I'm leading the discussion, if you like. I'm I'm bringing suggestions. But we have uh, in, in the class um, people from from a range of businesses bringing their views and. Uh, and I certainly make a lot of time for, for, for that discussion because this has to be real. You know, this has to be real. Of course, yeah. And, and much of, of the learning comes from the people in the class. Brian, I'm not sure how you, what your experience of it was. but Yeah, yeah. So like obviously, as you, as you mentioned, like there's a lot of stuff covered in the module that is of massive value to us as advisors. Um, I think what's really good about this course is that it's out of the practical nature of the content it makes it a lot more digestible. It's not just rote learning stuff to pass an exam. It's all very actionable stuff, whether that be like you mentioned, like putting a quantifiable science behind protection needs and the psychology behind that and retirement and like art longevity. All of that stuff is very, very important. You mentioned business accounts. But um, yeah, I really can attest to the the interactiveness, I suppose, of the, of the module yeah. in the lecture. Um, it was quite refreshing compared, especially for an online course with people sitting at home and no like physical interaction to have that back and forth in the class like you mentioned people from different slightly different backgrounds people who have been in the industry for three years people in the industry for 30 years is a massive difference yeah. in viewpoints and between people maybe who were started decades ago and where, where the industry is now um, and there was obviously a lot of discussion there was really kind of kind of challenge everyone even you to at times people were kind of challenged giving different viewpoints um, so much to the point where in some lectures I'm sure you didn't cover as much as you would want to do because it's got <laughs> <laughs> but then um, yeah, yeah, I'm adding one didn't we yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was one that was right there but <laughs> there was obviously a lot of collaborations so I can I fully agree with that yeah no that's great guys it's brilliant to hear and um, the different perspectives as well okay and I, I might just cover the, the business accounts of course yeah absolutely uh, yeah like the business accounts is, is actually separate but but under the under the CFP, yeah. the Financial Planning Standards Board do, do believe that 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 or does believe that financial advisors sh should you know as credible you know financial professionals sh should have a, an understanding of, of business accounts. So we go through a, a fairly you know established process where we you know, some of you may already have covered this and leave insert, but 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 just the basics of if I have financial data. Can I create the main um, financial statements? Uh, you know, yeah. the, the income statement or profit and loss, people might call it, or the the statement of financial position, the 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 the, the balance sheet. Uh, and then can I analyze those? 
And again, it's not that anyone's trying to be an accountant here, but, but in meeting uh, business people in particular, you know, who, who, who have their, their financial accounts, I think having the confidence to, 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 to understand the nature of those. And, and if you can make them, you, 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 can, you can understand it. So that's kind of a standalone mm -hmm. section of the course that we, right. we, we build up and we get out of the way relatively quickly in the, in, in, in the thing. You know, I, I genuinely, at first I can see people um, wondering why we're doing that. I don't you, Brian. <laughs> yeah. What was your experience of, of, of that? I hadn't done a business account since since secondary school, and to be honest, I saw a bit of PTSD. I, I, didn't yeah. know, I never really liked them. But yeah. then after, when actually spending a bit more time, time and kind of the fact like the module was kind of broken down into kind of like bite-sized little pieces of okay, there's this section, the next week you do this, and then, like the fact we spent a bit of time in it, you went through it in great detail. One helped me understand them a lot more, which again, as you say, like for us as finance professionals, well, we're not accountants, we're not expected to produce accounts it really helps and adds credibility for the client for when we have an understanding of the more holistic finance of a business, but also in line, like from my perspective, for this particular module, it is about risk and like being able to examine a set of accounts and point out risk, whether it be like a key person risk, whatever that may be to a particular business, it all does tie in. So again, whether you're doing it as a standalone module or looking to go on and do the whole postgrad, like the business accounts are a very, very important section of risk and financial planning in general. Yeah, absolutely. And it builds confidence as well, I think, you know, going forward, especially in the full scheme of it. Um, but no, thanks a million guys for that one. And um, that's brilliant to hear. So I think you have given, as I said, a great picture of what students can expect from this course. And just leading on from that to mention, part of my role in the education team is to support students throughout their course um, as well. So I'd like to assure potential students that LA are here to support you along your journey. And then just on that, Brian Ford, can I ask you to share with us your experience while studying this module with regards to your interaction with the lecture and also the study resources that were provided? Um, yeah, no problem. So obviously with the lecture, it's a real advantage having someone like like Brian to teach us. Um, yeah. One, because he does his wealth of knowledge in general, but for me, more importantly, like the wealth of industry experience and actually putting that knowledge into practice and being able to relay that back to us is, is it shows us the signs of a good lecture. Um, also, Brian, again, you were, I guess, we were discussing some of the lectures on quite a long time. So you were very, very supportive during the lectures. You would stay on late and answer questions to people, which is really, really helpful. And then even after the lecture, if people needed a hand, you were always there for emails and so on and so forth. Um, on the topic of emails, Grania. Um, yeah, just the team, I know, before I said Grania, I bombarded her with emails <laughs> and array of topics, and always very, very fast to respond. Mm. Always very helpful. So again, I can't speak hard enough for the education team and do on top of the lecture. Um, you mentioned study resources. So as students, yeah. you're with a, a huge level of resources, whether that be lecture slides, recordings, again, additional reading material, mm -hmm. even, even simple things like the lecture schedule and the assessment schedule, yeah. giving plenty of notice, and then yes. the, the exam papers, the sample exam papers are really, really useful. And I suppose on the topic of exams, um, mm -hmm. I found the continuous assessments to be a bit of a godsend, to be honest with you, because it kind of kept you honest throughout mm -hmm. and making sure that you were fully engaged at all times like having a, a an exam every four weeks made sure you're always paying attention and taking everything in that you should be taking in yeah. and then we say just leaving it to the very very end and and i suppose just cramming for an exam it really really kept you kept you engaged throughout um yes yeah, so like as, as a student that was kind of my perspective on that maybe brian yeah. wanted to add to that i don't know yeah, yeah. no the, the the assessment um ju just just to be clear, like the, the, the structure of it is that there, there are two of the continuous assessments, each counting for, I think, 25% Gronje, and the yep. final exam counts for 50%. Yes. Um, the first of them is a case study on, on you know, genuine family protection. We, we typically present a family and, and the needs they may have in terms of life cover and, and um, uh, illness protection. And and again, just it, it tries to draw on some of the concepts that that are that are introduced in the first num number of lectures, in both you know the, the probability of the, the 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 shape of the need over time, quantifying that and and matching products and talking about the you know the advantages and disadvantages of, of various products in both their their fit to the need and also how how customers uh, 
individual preferences might 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 make them more likely to 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 accept the need and accept yeah. the, the the advice um and th th that topic will be revisited and that, and that gives me a great insight into into where you know the, the concepts that are landing well with people are the ones that are more difficult in, because because that topic will, will be part of of the later exam as yeah. well as the core part yeah. the second um is <laughs> Is on the the business accounts, which is a very, very well established, you know, where you'll be given uh, the basic, as I said, information for a business yeah. over a year, and you'll be you'll be asked to create the income statement and statement of financial position on that, and answer some questions on it. That's a standalone piece, and once you cover that, that's that uh, yeah, out of the way for for, yeah. for in, in terms of the course, and then and then the the, the final exam um, covers you know every, can cover everything in the course except for, for 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 the business account so it's kind of it is well spread out over the piece yeah. certainly certainly the 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 first um one gives you know prepares for a lot for the final exam yeah definitely uh, as, as well yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. And just kind of from my own experience, obviously, I speak with students on a daily basis and the continuous assessment piece definitely alleviates the pressure that students mm. feel as they're not relying on just the one exam at the end. And um, we are obviously very conscious that students are working while also studying so that the so the team really kind of, you know, want to help support students during the course and longevity and to guide them along the way. And um, we are aware that students might always, you know, they're not always available to attend live lectures. So the benefit that we provide our students is giving them access to the lecture recordings as well. So just on that as well, then, Brian Ford, um, can I ask you to talk us through your approach to attending the online lectures, your additional study and how beneficial you found the recordings um, of the lectures and ultimately how you balance this work um, or the, yeah, this study with your work life commitments? Yeah, no problem. So like, firstly, the online lectures for me were a game changer. I made it a lot more accessible and it has been for a lot of people I've been speaking to. So obviously there's, there's no commute first and foremost, which is very handy yeah. to fit your work. And you can yeah. just log in when you're like, if it starts at 6 30 or at 6 29 ready to go. Um, yeah. <laughs> you get a break in the middle, you can have a cup of coffee. It's obviously very, very it makes it a lot more manageable for a lot of people and it makes the whole thing possible for some people who may not have been possible before before. So definitely was a a, a game changer. Um again the fact that they're recorded too means that you can always go back and rewatch them if maybe you yeah. film something or if you there's not on your if you're retired one night maybe you didn't quite grasp everything even for study purposes or again if something came up and you have to miss the lecture altogether although yeah. I wouldn't definitely wouldn't get into the habit of doing that it's nice to have it as you go back and 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 watch it um, and again I know we just spoke about about the continuous assessments again made the whole thing a lot more palatable and like with a bit of work you can do like for me in my approach like with a bit of work I was like I can do really really well in this if I just again put like it's four weeks like it doesn't like well there's a lot of information in each lecture it's only four weeks worth so again if you work do work hard you can get a quite a good result in the continuous yeah. assessments which kind of is kind of a getting two birds at one stone because one you're getting good marks in, in it but also two you're you're taking in everything absorbing all the information which is obviously more important at the end of the day rather than again just having an end of year exam cramming just to get a a few letters after your name or something like that you know so obviously I think that was yeah. really good and um, for me again my overall approach is like I'm doing two modules at a time of the overall postgrad with the view to completing it in 18 months so hopefully fingers crossed now the last two go well I'm starting them in September for my sins but uh, <laughs> obviously again I'm not going to with these things like I'm not going to say that it's it's not time consuming because obviously that it is but yeah. if if you're organized then you're going to be fine like if you again watch the lecture at, ideally live on the night to yeah. participate again in the interaction like we were saying and then after the lecture when things are fresh maybe obviously maybe not on the same night but within a couple of days do the extra yeah. you need to rewatch some of it if you can um even small things like the ability on the 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 lecture to speed it up so again like i, yeah. I, I speak very quickly so i'm going to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so that kind of gives me a bit of a me over other people, I suppose. But again, um, being able to go back and watch the lectures is really. Yeah. But I would definitely make sure that you're you're keeping on top of it at all times. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously that's me kind of doing two modules at once. But again, if someone was kind of 
somewhat hesitant or maybe kind of unsure of their time constraints or capacity or yeah. capability of doing it, then you can always just do this module as kind of like a gateway into maybe the greater postgrad. Exactly. Yeah. It kind of gives you a flavor of what the other modules are like because they all follow a similar structure in terms of a few weeks continuous assessment, a few weeks in the assessment, and a few weeks final exam. Yeah. And then obviously you get the benefit of a, a beneficial course and getting the FPRA designation too. So it's kind of a win win. Yeah. That's my yeah, approach. Anyway. But again, yeah, no, brilliant. Yeah. Like, like an ad there, Gronya. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've, I've, I've been delivering this course for a good few years now. And, you know, it was mooted before COVID, even it was mooted the, the idea of putting it online. And, you know, I actually was very much against that. I, I, you okay. know, because I, I, I very much valued the, you know, the interactive nature of it, the, of course, the classroom yeah. discussion, the, the debate, the, you know, the, the argument. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is Brian said, you know, at times. Um, but actually, it's been very successful. You know, it's been very oh, successful moving yeah. to that uh, online. A, a, a big part was because, uh, in my experience with this, you know, with, with the LIA classes, people are opening up, you know, people are turning on their cameras. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's an essential part of it. I'd be asking people yeah. to, to, to come to the class with that, with their views and, and with that, that openness, because it makes it, it transforms, you know, it transforms it into a real discussion and, and, yeah. and we, we get the piece back. So, exactly. um, so uh, you know, I think it is useful. You know, we can't meet, can't, we can't uh, make every lecture, but but attending on 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 the day is great, and I think it can yeah. really add also to the efficiency of, of your time because, um, you know, in that open environment, if there's something that's not clear, you, you know, it is discursive. You know, you can ask questions. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. and we do it. You know, there's a, there's a balance between between trying to keep the that lessons con concise but to, it's for that reason you know we also have the ability and, and after every lecture I'm, I'm happy to, to keep it open for as long as anybody wants yeah uh, to have that to recreate that after class at the, the discussion desk, kind of yeah. question you might have yeah yeah so so, so if, if you if you bring your you, you know I, I would recommend people as much as possible attend the course um you know live uh, yeah. and, and bring their questions and use that time afterwards where there's just a smaller number of people who, who have yeah. whatever question and you know it's my commitment to, to that I'll do everything I can to to come at it in different ways to to to, to you know particularly with the newer the newer topics that we course, we've been yeah. some of the maths is new to some people some of the possibilities um you know we we can we can get through that on, yeah. on that in, in a very efficient way yeah. rather than rather than having to go off and, and, and do it yourself you know so we, yeah, we will absolutely. we will genuinely try and make it as efficient as possible to get the, the learning across great no that's great guys and um thanks a million for those insights um from you both um because i know that some students contemplating taking this course um, they can be nervous about the time commitment and balancing studying while working. So it is great to hear um, about this from your perspective, Brian Ford, especially as a student who recently completed the course itself. Um, and I'm going to just follow up then with another question for Brian Ford um, on completion of the risk management and insurance planning module. You attained the financial planning risk advisor designation. What has this designation added to you, firstly, from a credibility point of view? And secondly, can you share with us how the knowledge and skills gained from the course have been directly applied to your work in financial planning? Yeah, so obviously, again, like as I mentioned a few times, like, well, the, having the designation is important. I feel the reason that a lot of us do it is to get the actual knowledge and the information as part yeah. of it. But like, obviously, additional qualifications do like enhance your credibility. When Absolutely, speaking. yeah. Um, so there's there's obviously the incredibility element of it, but for again for me, I think a big part of it was it kind of gives you more confidence and almost like comfort when you are meeting clients that you've gotten like best in class guidance and you've the best class information and you're yeah. passing it on in, a, in the right way for again things are, which is obviously really really important things like protection policies are and really really important to have them set up correctly if you're advising someone towards retirement and give them a, a realistic. I suppose gauge of how long an RF will last on for their fund choice and risk level. It's really, really beneficial and it gives you a lot of comfort. Okay, I know I'm, what I'm saying. This person is 100% correct, um, and yeah. given the information that I have, so that is obviously adding credibility for them because you're coming across the knowledge of that and giving yourself additional confidence when speaking to them. Um, yeah. And like again, you don't have to wait to 
for me anyway, but I didn't wait until I got the, <laughs> the delineation to put that into practice again. Good, uh, yeah. like, I, I would do like, like the day after the lecture, like, like I'd be like, okay, I'd be putting that into practice in my client meetings. Yes. Because yeah. of the, how, the, how practical that it was. And yes. then I suppose, again, just from the, 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 the module in general, another thing again particularly down because of the kind of the kind of collaborative aspect of it it kind of for me anyway kind of introduced me to another network of advisor different approaches yeah like all of us working toward the same goal which is like delivering the best outcome for the client at the end of the day so yeah i think the the designation did did a lot for me and particularly yeah no that's that's brilliant to hear brian and it's a really great insight as well um on everything so I just have a final question for you both, which is, would you have any additional words of encouragement for anyone on today's webinar who is thinking about making the decision to undertake the financial planning risk advisor designation? And Brian, uh, Brian Ford, I might ask yourself first. Yeah, um, sorry, the brains are not, so I don't know. I know. <laughs> answer my head. Um, so again, like, yeah, again, I think we both touched on kind of everything here, like whether someone's looking to do it as a standalone module, again, I think there's loads of value in it for all the reasons I literally just said. And um, so much practical information from it. Like it's not just a course for rote learning and getting a few letters after your name. It is to kind of challenge your thinking, particularly because again, you might come into the module thinking, oh, this is the way it's done. But then you do it like, okay, I'm actually it's it's, it's not that it's completely different, but maybe I can take this spin in it and make it a little bit 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 maybe kind of just sharpen my tools a little bit. So if you're going to just do it as a standalone module, again, it gives you that enhanced credibility. It gives you that kind of enhanced comfort and confidence but again for anyone who's considering doing the overall postgrad again I would highly recommend this module as a kind of an introductory one because again it is a very very beneficial on a standalone basis but also it does give you a really good idea about all the preceding modules are going to be like so for me um, again for anyone who's considering doing it the online nature it is a lot more digestible and a lot more accessible than maybe it would have been before so I wouldn't be scared of doing it. That's great. And Brian Grimes, would you have any additional words to add? Yeah, so similar to Brian. You, you know, you know, it, it, I, I think what, what I hope um, we bring together, and and the, and, the, and I said like it's 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 the class that does it. It's the it's the it's yeah. the mixture of of of, of it, it, what we try and do is get uh, a lot of advisors who are interested in their role together in a yeah. room with me putting ideas into the room. So whether you you want to to get the benefit of those ideas or whether you have strong views yourself and you want to get them tested against what others are thinking or or or, or probing or pushing them you know i'm i'm very yeah. interested to hear new views on things I, I think it's a great exercise to do to go and 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 and, and put it through the the mill and and, yeah. and and i think hopefully you know, my desire is that is everybody comes out with i have a deeper understanding of of what I am putting together for for customers, um, and uh, it's it's working for for both my customers and, and for me in 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 a real world. Yeah, so. yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. No, thanks a million to both. Um, I'm sure you have given a lot of people on this webinar plenty to think about as they prepare to make the next step towards attaining the financial planning risk advisor designation. Um, so I'm just going to share some contact information on screen. Um, just bear with me. I think that is up now. Brian can, or both Brian's, if you wouldn't mind just confirming if that's yeah, up on that's screen. That's Brilliant. Yeah. Um, so you can find further information about this course on our website at www.lia.ie, or you can email our team directly at level9 at lia.ie. And finally, you can also reach out to my colleague, Brian Dunphy, who has been through the course himself and will be able to advise um, you on the next steps. And you can contact him at brian.dunphy at lia.ie. And just on that, for anyone who is interested in the retirement planning advisor designation, we will have um, a webinar on this module where we will be speaking with the lecturer and a past student. And this webinar will be held at 10 a.m. on Thursday, the 29th of June. And you can register through our website for this webinar as well. So just in the time that's left uh, to us, there are a number of questions that have come in and we'll get to those now. 
Um, one of the first questions that has been asked is when can, when can students enroll for the programme? So enrolment is now open and demand for places for all modules commencing in September is high. So immediate um, enrolment is encouraged in order to secure your place. And just another question that has come through, um, another popular question that has been asked is when when is the course starting? This course uh, starts the 6th of September. Lectures for this module are held on Wednesday evenings from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. and are delivered online. Um, and then just, just one question. Um, yeah, so we have another great question here, actually, that I might post yourself, Brian Ford. And um, this is, this person is making the step to, uh, from QFA and concerned about their ability to undertake the programme. Would you, or what would your advice be to them? Yeah, so again, again, I wouldn't be hesitant again. Like the QFA kind of gives you a lot of the kind of foundational knowledge that mm -hmm. you need to give you the key, whether it be just key terminology or just a good understanding of it. Mm -hmm. And so like with this, obviously it's a step up in, in terms of content and it's a lot more kind of, I suppose, detailed than something like this. Yeah, QFA. absolutely. But yeah. again, what I would say is that it, I've, I, I, in a way, I found it like not easier, but again, I found it that the 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 content a lot more practical and something that you'd use in your day to day job. So yeah. with, again, if you're if you're doing the QFA, I wouldn't be hesitant because again, for all the things we mentioned, the online recordings, continuous assessments, the the support you're getting from the lecture, from the team, yeah. and the collaboration in the class. So I, I, again, I don't think you will you will find it too overwhelming but if you are again I'd, I'd suggest just doing this one in isolation and I'm sure you'd be more than fine because again it because of all the reasons discussed yeah no that's I brilliant think, Brian thanks for that. could I add something to that Ron? Like, absolutely I, yeah I, I think the, the academic you know it's level nine it can can be daunting but I think yeah. it's important not to underestimate the the practical um you know people are working in this every day mm -hmm. You know, so compared to a level nine in the university where people are learning new, new material and it's all theoretical and all and, you know, the, the actual uh, starting point that everyone is coming from, you know, where, where, where they're meeting people yeah. every day to put this in place is, is you're starting from a great position. Yeah. There's new complex techniques that we'd be bringing. Uh, and, you know, the important thing is to engage with those and try and relate those to, to your day to, to day. If, and if, if you do that, uh, you'll be fine you know you yeah yeah, you yeah. Know, you'll, you'll learn new skills you you will make a step yeah. forward but but it's not a a chasm you know because yeah. of that yeah very strong yeah. start position you're coming from yeah no that's brilliant thank you both for that um so just unfortunately i can see the time um and we have um that is all the time we have for today um however any questions we didn't get to um we will respond to people afterwards individually so I just want to say again, thanks to both Brian Grimes and Brian Ford uh, for being on this webinar today and for sharing your insights. Thank you to everyone who tuned in this morning. We hope you found this webinar beneficial. We also have a survey at the end of the webinar and we'd really appreciate your feedback. And um, thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.